now I know who my stalker is. My stalker is Shannon, better known as Creep Show Art. 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 Shannon from Creep Show Art. Suffice to say, I do not like Creep Show Art. She's posting this vile shit about her friends on Lol Cow. Lol Cow. It's not the nicest website on the internet. How are but you mean to run into glare? I this situation is way more than petty internet drama and involves Creepshow Art stalking another YouTuber on the platform for years. I never would have expected Shannon, Creepshow Art of all people, to be someone who would turn their back on a friend. Okay, let's talk about the wildly perplexing mess surrounding creep show art. Since the dawn of time, people have been posting bullying, trolling nonsense online while hiding behind the shadows of faceless, nameless accounts. And sometimes, probably more often than you realize, those comments are coming from influencers and celebrities themselves. Cheeky. <sighs> But now, a new culture of influencers bashing influencers undercover has been growing, and every now and then, their hypocrisy is outed, thus putting their racist, homophobic, insensitive, harm-pushing, power-hungry, baiting, narcissistic, prejudicial bullying on full display. So naturally, me and my big head have thoughts about it, because as I always say, it's not drama, it's dangerous. So today, we're gonna dive head first and balls deep into the destructive path of confusion left by creep show art to answer to the age-old question that, yeah, this looks really f***ed up, but why? He's saying that it was a stalker. There's someone pretending to be Shannon. That was the narrative. How do you mask being a sh person to your friends and people online and then go on and cape so hard? You have made my life so much more difficult than it ever needed to be when I was in an incredibly vulnerable place. Hi there, hello, hello, hi, it's my face again. I, I struggled for quite a while with where to start on this doc, and while there are like hundreds of channels covering this, as you all know with these docs, I try to dig into other areas that are perhaps overlooked or avoided because they're so challenging to talk about. Now as usual, I'm going to break this down into three parts. The disturbing history of Creep Show's secret life, the blurred line of calculated deception, and inside the mind of a stalker. Also. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend you watch my last doc, which was a Gabby Hanna deep dive, as I think you'll find what I discussed extremely interesting. I'll link that one in the description, so please give it a watch. Say hi to Miss Buffalo Billy. So y'all know I'm fostering a mama kitty named Bill Farrell and her six babies, AKA the billing department. They're all available for adoption. If you're interested in giving a baby Bill a loving home, please DM me on their Instagram account at Bill Farrell. Aww, aww. Please also follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna post this photo, comment with the paw print emoji so I know you came from this video. Now we have a lot to cover, but real quick before we get into this, we have an incredible sponsor who I'm so stoked to partner with, as well as a charity. So Scentford is a fragrance subscription service that lets you shop over 600 perfume brands without like the ridiculous perfume prices. I mean, like, let's be honest, some of these brands be charging some like, woo, child have mercy prices. Like y'all have seen them 300, $500 bottles, right? So let's be real, your girl ain't dropping that kind of coin right now, especially if I can't test drive it for a few days to know if I really like it over time, which is a huge reason why I love Scentford. Scentford lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month with a flex subscription for just $16. Yes, honey, yes. Now you get to pick what you want every month so there are no surprises, you'll be happy with what you get, and you can skip any month. So I actually got three fragrances. I got the Oscar de la Renta Alibi, because your girl needs an alibi every now and then. I also got the La Vanilla Vanilla Coconut. I got both of these scents because they're on the warmer side, which I really love. A little bit of musk, a little bit of vanilla. And I also got Memoir Archives by the Sea. I don't usually wear like the fresher scents, so this was perfect for me to be able to try it and see if I like it. So they arrive in this cute little pouch. But when you take it out, you have this little vial. And just think of it like a lipstick tube. You just twist to reveal the fragrance, and then it's ready to spritz. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that smell. That is literally me. Like, if you were to put swoop in a bottle, this, this is what I would smell like. 
Oh, that just smells so good. And if you want to remove the fragrance, you literally just slide it out just like that and then put it back in, twist, and that will lock it so it's safe for travel. Toss it in your bag, you're good to go. Scentbird has top designer brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace. They have perfumes, colognes, neutral options, and with each fragrance, you'll get a full 30-day supply. So that amouage that cost $345 gets you a 30-day supply for $16, honey. Ah, and then maybe you want to switch it up, do a new one, you know what I mean? So tap the link in the description to check out Scentbird, take a sample quiz to help you find exactly what you love, like I did, and use code SWOOP to get 30% off to make your first month only $11. $11, people, it's kind of a no-brainer. Thank me later. And like I said last time in the Gabby Hanna doc, I will be making a donation from the sponsorship to the charity Rain. And again, I can't thank you all enough for continuing to watch these docs and check out the sponsors because your support is what makes these donations possible. And without you, I'm literally like, like, bitch, who am I? <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. I might, I might need to take it to Petty University real quick because child, this shit was confusing when I was first researching it and trying to figure it all out. What in the whole grain, gluten-free Harry Styles universe is going on here? A bitch was confused. So as you know, Shannon, AKA Creepshow Art, is an art commentary creator on YouTube who was recently outed for allegedly posting horrendous things on Locale, an anonymous site where like trolls just go to trash influencers. I just discovered the site exists when researching and let me just say, 10 out of 10, don't recommend, but I digress. Now, Shannon was allegedly making anonymous posts that were bullying other creators, using homophobic and racial slurs, doxed her sibling, and both trashing and promoting herself. Because doxing and self-posting are against LolCal's rules, they revoked her anonymity and made public all the dark shit that she posted. This was We're talking about a total of 292 posts over the course of several years. Now, LolCal verified that it came from Shannon's IP, but they couldn't release, like, all of the evidence because that would be doxing her. So we have to refer to all of this as allegedly. Now, when she was outed, Shannon claimed that she was the victim of a stalker named Amy, who many speculate that Amy is made up. And Shannon blames this Amy person for, well, literally everything. Like, bitch. A bitch blamed her for everything. <laughs> Class dismissed. I do have a confession to make. I am essentially me from Catfish with how good I am at online stalking. Now, as all of this unfolded, Emily Artful, another art creator on YouTube. Hi everyone, I'm Emily. Posted on Twitter that Shannon had been stalking her for years. I am currently shaking and crying because Creepshow Art is finally being exposed for the absolute terrible person she is. I have known Shannon for many years, even years before she started her YouTube channel. She has copied, stalked, harassed, and threatened me and my children's lives. She has used revenge against me, tried to use my drug addiction against me. She has literally gotten me fired from multiple jobs, causing me to be homeless. This person has pushed me to the brink of suicide multiple times and then tried to blame it on a mutual friend when I finally caught her red-handed by tracing her IP. Shannon, you are Amy. All of the things you claimed Amy did to you are the things you did to me. Receipts to come, I've got years worth of them. I wanted to read verbatim Emily's statement because it really summarizes everything that she was sharing that she had been going through for so long. And she made a two hour video that I highly recommend that you guys watch. For the majority of those six years and several years prior, I had been facing stalking, harassment, and threats from one very recognizable source. But she posts this video where she details years worth of screenshots and proof, naming Shannon as her alleged stalker. Now I know who my stalker is. My stalker is Shannon, better known as Creepshow Art, and what I believe to be her current husband, Anthony Parker, who is also my abusive ex-partner. Now, Emily also names her abusive ex, Anthony, and Anthony is now believed to be married to Shannon, and Shannon took over and is now her primary abuser. What's really interesting is it was definitely Andrew in the beginning. Like, I really think Andrew just roped Shannon into this mean girl obsession with me, 
and Shannon kind of became the mastermind over time. A former classmate of Shannon's shared on Twitter that they had actually witnessed Shannon's fixation and harassment of Emily. I never thought I'd find myself related to a situation like this, but I am absolutely in the business of holding people accountable for their actions. I met Shannon my freshman year of college in 2011. She was fine at the beginning, but she became concerning very quickly. Shannon began to cyber stalk Emily. First started by finding her YouTube page, but Shannon started looking for her home address, her phone number, or any other info she could find. Shannon told me she had plans to harass Emily, either by sending her letters or prank calling her home, how she planned to leave hate messages on her videos or DM her from burner accounts to spread hate. Now, before I go any further, let me just make it clear. I believe Emily. I, I believe the survivor. I, I believe Emily and others have been through a traumatic event. I also believe that there are complexities here that reach far beyond the surface of what a lot of videos have skimmed over. And I've done a lot of reading on this. Emily shared that uh, sometimes while trying to mitigate risk, Emily tried to be nice to Anthony as a means of protecting herself and survival. I'm so afraid of him. I start to do that tend and befriend thing. I try to approach him with a softness. And this is a common thing that survivors feel they need to do in order to try and defuse a potentially volatile situation. And I know some people are gonna use this to doubt my validity and be like, well, if you're really scared, why were you being so nice to him? That's exactly what a lot of people do. It is a natural instinct for people and oftentimes it is the right instinct because it does keep you safer. And I just wanna say, I think Emily should be commended for how brave she has been through all of this. Emily, I don't know if you would ever see this, why would you? But please don't ever regret the steps that you took to protect yourself and your family. You are very strong, very brave. How good I am at online stalking. I'm amazing at it, guys. Now, let's dig into some of the alarming posts released on LolCal allegedly made by Shannon. Now, in the post, there were, there were many common themes sprinkled throughout, including heavy use of racist slurs, ableist language, transphobia, and race baiting. She sounds like fun. She also doxed her non-binary sibling while they were hospitalized, as well as intentionally misgendering them, who made a public statement about what they witnessed with Shannon in regards to her relationship with Anthony, her harassment of Emily and her transphobia. <laughs> Shannon wasn't wrong when I called Anthony abusive back in 2015. I stand by that still. This is not something to glaze over. There is a man out there who abused and attacked a woman. I 100% believe that this person was in my city looking for me so that they could kill me. And if Shannon, who's now married to him, is possibly also the victim of abuse from Anthony, then steps should be taken there as well. It absolutely doesn't excuse any of Shannon's vile behavior, but no one deserves to be abused Period. Okay, let's read on. I actually caught her using multiple accounts to harass who I now know to be Emily. I don't remember the year this happened. I just know I saw that she had multiple accounts messaging cruel and kind things to someone. When I asked her about it, she told me it was Anthony's ex. When she doxed me on locale, she misgendered me intentionally. My pronouns have been they, them for about three years. <laughs> bitch, listen, 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 bitch. Okay, I, I need a petty moment real quick. Okay, so Petty University. So is Shannon posting content around trans rights and being vocal publicly while privately throwing around the T word every three to five business days and intentionally misgendering her sibling is a big ass problem. Like do not pass go bitch, do not collect $200. This shit unfortunately is common. There are an alarming number of people who use transphobic or like racist or misogynistic language in private while publicly claiming to be an advocate or an ally. It's this type of closed door hypocrisy that should remind all of us to tread lightly when holding a celebrity or influencer up on a pedestal. Y'all be praising some folks and I'm just like, I, but did, are we, <laughs> Bailey Sarian, can we get better idols? I just, I just, but what do I know? <laughs> Class dismissed. Oh, and I just want to mention this now because y'all keep asking me, yes, Petty University merch is coming, bitch! <laughs> I am so excited about this. We are working on it right now, so get ready. Fall session is about to be lit. 
Now, as I said, there are tons of videos dissecting all of the posts that Shannon allegedly made trashing other creators, but there was something concerning that I haven't really seen others discuss. Here's some posts from just a month ago, just before LolCow outed all of her posts. Is it me or has something been brewing? I noticed that she's withdrawing like crazy, deleted Twitter, moved to close friends IG stories, then made a Finsta, constantly mentioning how she's having meltdowns all the time. I think she did something we haven't caught on to yet, and she's holding herself in before it gets out. I have a feeling it's not just Peach's drama and that she flew too close to the sun, Reed got high off her own farts, and spurged before researching, really f up this time and is preparing for fallout. Now this got me thinking, and I understand the idea that Shannon is just trying to stir up drama and get people to talk about her by trolling herself, and that very well may be what's happening. Some of these posts almost feel like a confession. Like she is, like in, in my opinion, quite literally publicly confessing to the manipulation, gaslighting, and abuse she has inflicted on others. And here's some more posts, what I mean by that. She deleted her community tab because people for the past two months were demanding an apology. She won't because the Peaches videos are the biggest videos on her channel. Then she did the coward's move and said hackers deleted her stuff so people are more angry. So her fans did more digging and found out a lot of her videos are completely full of shit, lies, and full of irrational emotions like calling people racist just because she doesn't like them or calling someone sexist because they didn't swear in front of a girl. She's a person and she can't pity party her way out of this one. However, what I think she's doing is closing all communications and hopes if she ignores it long enough people will forget. <laughs> Like, it almost feels like she wants to get caught. Like, sort of the way we hear about people who cheat or commit crimes, do things like consciously or subconsciously because they really want to get caught. Maybe they feel guilty, maybe they feel trapped, maybe these are like impulses, they don't know how to control. You know what I mean? Like, it's it was alarming to me to see her spell out ahead of time before these posts were even outed, spell out all of the things that ultimately she was doing, that she was telling lies, making up stories, not apologizing, leaving videos up because they're bringing in her views. Like it just reads like this anonymous confession that was just right there for everybody to see. And if that's what is going on, I don't know if she was fully cognizant that that's what she was doing or if it was a manipulation tactic. And again, you see her say things like, she's such a compulsive oversharer, but over the last months completely withdrew from any points of interaction. Her lying is going to make this whole situation much worse. People just want her to take accountability and apologize to the people she hurt. She's up on her soapbox shitting on everyone else on the internet, but Little Miss White Savior Complex can't do any wrong. Either way, calculated or not, it kind of reads like she's aware that all people want is for her to take accountability. All people want is for her to apologize. And she's aware of that, that she's not willing to, that she's sitting on her high horse. I don't know, maybe this is bragging. I can't say that I'm doing this because then people will cancel me, but I want everyone to know I'm doing it, so let me brag about it a little bit anonymously just to, you know, feel good. Like maybe maybe that's what it is. Let me let me know what you guys think. I'm amazing at it, guys. You have no idea. In addition to all the bullying of others, there are literally countless posts from Shannon bashing and complimenting herself incessantly. To wrap it up, it's a classic story of Shannon having zero control of her emotions. Moral of the story, don't be friends with Shannon. We know you're pathetic, Shannon, but this takes the cake. Shannon, you're such a stupid thinking you're playing 3D chess when you're just too R-word. Shannon, since you will clearly read this thread, as someone who personally knows you, I think you might guess who, you need therapy, lady. You are full s She's clearly highly paranoid, already judging by her flipping her shit, scapegoating random people. Shannon is unhinged. I did a quick keyword search across all the locale posts, and if Shannon wrote these posts, she wrote her own name nearly 530 times across the 292 posts, and a huge percentage of them are bullying herself. Now again, I'm not showing this as a means of saying, let's all feel sorry for her, just that there are many layers, and this shit 
it is complex and in the same breath I cannot in good conscience dismiss the fact that I feel that there could be even more layers to this regarding mental health challenges and now I know that's all relative and, and like shit my mental health is in the trash much of the time like I seem to love beating myself up so maybe that's why I'm stuck on this I don't know because in a bizarre and twisted way there's also like no excuse for the terrible things she said about herself repeatedly for years, you know what I mean? Some of this reads to me like real self-bullying or what is known as digital self-harm or digital SH. For those of you who aren't familiar, let's start with a definition of SH. For some people, when depression and anxiety lead to a tornado of emotions, they turn to SH looking for a release. SH and SI are any forms of hurting oneself on purpose. But there is a lesser known, less understood form of SH on the rise known as as digital SH. Digital SH is where an individual anonymously posts mean or hurtful comments about themselves online. By creating entirely separate personas online, teenagers are able to then post on their self-identified account different types of hate-filled comments targeted at themselves from themselves. I know it's a lot to take in. Digital SH might follow a similar pathway where bullying victims turn to the internet to post hurtful things about themselves in hopes that others will respond positively and alleviate the negative feelings that stem from being bullied. It's it's like a painfully twisted way of creating a false validation of your own feelings that might not be rooted in reality. Like let's say someone has graduated school, has great friends, a career, but mentally has convinced themselves that they're an absolute failure in life. Hint, hint, talking about myself here. Because reality doesn't reflect that feeling, a person might anonymously go online calling themselves a terrible failure so that now there's something in the real world validating their feelings even though it came from them. But here, here's the hypothetical question. Was Shannon using lolcow as a place for digital SH, or was it solely a well thought out, highly intelligent, strategic move to generate drama and buzz around her channel for the sake of getting publicity and attention? Was it both? Can the mind really separate that kind of continual attacking someone else and self-bashing over and over and over again without at least some of it getting to them? This is all speculation, but like, what do you think? Cause I, cause I don't know. But when you've been stalked as long as I have, you can detect your stalker's language to the point where I could start to differentiate the voices between Andrew and Shannon. How do you, how do you heal from digital SH? I know therapy isn't accessible to many, so here are some things that you can do. Recognize the situations that make you feel out of control. These are basically your triggers. If hanging out with person X makes you feel like trash, note that you feel like shit and limit your contact with person X. Do not shame yourself, criticize yourself, or blame yourself for those negative thoughts. You are not stupid, you are not worthless, and you are not a loser for saying harmful things about yourself. Once you understand that, then we can start to work on it because you deserve it. But for about 12 years now, I've been harassed online by the girl who catfishes me. Isn't that a coinky dink? That right there is the most passive aggressive shit I have ever read. There's something else I just can't get past. The mimicking of Emily's trauma. Like this happened when Emily tweeted in 2019 about having a stalker sharing. As someone who has dealt with a cyber stalker for eight plus years, this really hit home for me. This person has an inappropriate picture of me when I was underage and they used to taunt me with it. First of all, sidebar, I, I can't skip this. Possessing an inappropriate picture of a child is, is is not only illegal, but holding it over someone's head as a way to control them is called revenge porn. And they don't even have to be a child. It is abusive and it is disgusting. But once I only shared that about an eight year stalker, three days later, Shannon posts a video that she has had a stalker for eight plus years, coincidentally named Amy. Now, if all of the evidence is true, then many believe Shannon manufactured this story to come out with a video first to beat Emily to the punch so that if Emily ever shared about her own stalker, which was Shannon, it would look like Emily was copying Shannon and Shannon has a built-in scapegoat with this Amy thing. It's 
I think it's funny that she picked the name Amy. I think she deliberately picked a name that was very close to mine so that if I ever came out with allegations, she could be like, see, I even chose Amy because it sounds like Emily. And of course she picked all the things that she did to me. So then I couldn't even come out if I wanted to because then it would seem like I was copying her instead of her copying me. Now the copying also happened when Emily confronted Shannon privately in DMs. And, and in that conversation, Shannon twisted it around on Emily and said, oh, but look, I also have been harassed for years as like a means to deflect blame and mirror Emily's trauma. Shannon continues, I get where you're coming from with the accusation. I have been harassed by a girl who catfished me for about 12 years now. I find that really interesting. I know exactly how long I have been stalked by you, Shannon. I think it's weird that you put eight plus in your title when you tell me 12 years. And twisted to say that she relates to what Emily is going through when Shannon was likely the cause of the trauma. Shannon continues, to the point where she tried to convince my mom I was a cam girl and photoshopped nudes of me. See, I find things like this interesting because I was a cam girl for a short period of time. And I also, by Shannon or Andrew, had uh, my nudes sent back to me, photoshopped, like in a mocking way, making fun of my body. These are, these are classic signs of gaslighting, which Emily points out as it made her feel weakened. Shannon and Andrew absolutely knew the anguish and the stress and the anxiety they inflicted upon me from stalking me and they knew that it drove me to the brink of suicide a number of times. That's what gaslighting does. It, it makes you feel paranoid, like you're the one who's wrong. Here's where I start to show a little bit of doubt and weakness and she just totally pounces on it. I said, look, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. I know I seem crazy, but it's been eight years of harassment. Now Shannon did this time and time again, the copying, copying other people's content, their thumbnails, potentially even her own orange and black hairstyle, dating the same partner, and now the stalker stories, which got me thinking. I found a fascinating article called Five Ways Narcissists Project and Attack You. Now again, I'm not diagnosing any individual, but I think it's important to identify in case you experience this with someone in your life. So number one, calling you things that you are not. Saying like, you're cheating on me when that person's not, but you can bet the person accusing is cheating. Number two, grandiosity, mimicking, and exaggeration. Narcissists often feel a need to compete with others since they are factually not that special and terribly insecure on top of it. They will pretend, lie, hurt or exploit others, or do whatever else they deem necessary for personal gain. As a result, they may take a upon other people's character traits and achievements, often to the degree of mimicking, plagiarizing, stealing, and being a fraud, all while defaming and belittling others. This is meant to destroy the credibility of their victims while appearing to be more competent themselves. This provides a handy distraction from what is really going on. So from, again, a world macro perspective of human behavior, we're seeing how mimicking and mirroring can play a part when someone is trying to compete with someone else. Number three, the preemptive strike. Whenever a narcissistic person feels threatened, they will call you the things that they themselves are, and then they will try to stalk you, slander you, or discredit you. They will start a smear campaign and attempt character assassination. In their mind, frighteningly, you have become their mortal enemy. They also have no problem doing all of it preemptively and calling it a defense. And that's where I wondered if like the Amy story, was that a preemptive strike? They also will accuse you of the very things they themselves are doing. And of course she picked all the things that she did to me so then I couldn't even come out if I wanted to because then it would seem like I was copying her instead of her copying me. Like, Do you have anyone in your life who exhibits some of these behaviors? Is it helpful to see it spelled out so you know what to look for? Honestly a lot of people have tried to make me feel bad about how good I am at it and I'm, I don't f***ing care at this point. Now real quick, I wanna shift into a conversation about liars. And <laughs> woo, yay, this ought to be fun. I love liars. Give it to me, Zaddy, yeah. <laughs> oh, f 
me, okay. Often when Shannon has been confronted in the past, she has either deflected or shifted blame or flat out lied. I know, shocking. An influencer who is allergic to taking accountability for their actions. What has the world become? <laughs> so I did a little research on liars because we also encounter this in people in our everyday lives. Bitch, we all know some liars and some of y'all be out there telling some lies too. I came across this article, The Three Types of Liars, How to Spot and Deal with Them Before They Ruin Your Team. Now, this is specifically referring to liars within the workplace, but it applies to all areas of life. In its extreme forms, people who habitually lie or deflect can also become abusive, manipulative, gaslighting, and harmful, especially to those who are more vulnerable to abuse, like SA survivors, kids, those in recovery. So if you've ever felt manipulated by someone exhibiting these signs, please take safe measures to protect yourself if you feel at risk of abuse. The pathetic liar wants to be liked and creates deception in order to avoid conflict and have co-workers like him or her. These types of liars go along with groupthink, rarely offer their own opinions or leadership, and seem to change their minds frequently. The narcissistic liar demands attention, yet the lies that he or she create always deny responsibility and accountability for the actions of the narcissist. This type of person never admits to making a mistake, even when the mistake could be a growth opportunity. Every missed objective is someone else's fault. Oh, honey, 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 that was a lot. <laughs> Basically, the narcissistic liar demands attention, never admits to making a mistake, and is quick to blame others, making themselves a victim. Zooming out to a world human view. Maybe traits of narcissism are common to all of us to an extent. I, might, I think there are parts of it that help in human survival, so I don't just want to blanket, like, stigmatize anything. Most people seek attention from someone at some point, but, bitch, most people don't mirror the abuse they're being accused of for the sake of possibly victimizing themselves. Pause for reaction. Moving on. Sociopathic liars are the most damaging types of liars because they lie on a routine basis without conscience and often without reason. Sociopaths lie simply because they feel like it. Fun. <laughs> Many lie so pathologically that they do not even know when their deception took over. And I think that's what makes that so dangerous. Speaking, speaking on a personal note real quick, I have someone in my life, uh, someone who has been extremely mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive to me for a long time, who is a sociopathic liar, diagnosed. This person relentlessly made me feel like just total worthless shit for a very long time and contributed heavily to my struggles with suicidal ideation. And I was diagnosed with ongoing PTSD and fibromyalgia myalgia as a physical reaction to the trauma. I'm not going to go into detail now because it's 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 fucked up. It's very painful. I am in many ways trapped with them because I cannot at this time fully escape them. They are unfortunately a part of someone else's life who I am very close with. So I cannot escape my long-standing abuser because they're always going to be around that other person that I care about. So I <sighs> It is, it has been without a doubt some of the worst hell and torment that I've ever lived through and I wouldn't wish this kind of abusive prison on anyone. But I say all of that to say like even, even if you're in a similar situation with a narcissistic liar or a sociopathic liar or just, just someone who tries to manipulate or abuse you, you do have options to protect yourself. If you can safely set boundaries and make them known, please do so. If you can't, please reach out privately to someone that you trust for help. I have very specific boundaries that are cemented in place now and it, it, like, it took me 
years to get here, but I've managed and while they're still in my life, I can now better manage our interactions and limit the harm that they continue to try to do to me mentally and emotionally. And I've lived through a lot of these things and I know that there are way too many of you who are living through it as well. And I just want you to hopefully have a better understanding if that in any way gives you any kind of freedom in how you think about stuff to separate yourself from things and find your healing. Please remember that the lies, the, the gaslighting, the abuse that they try to inflict on you is a shitty reflection of them and not you. You do not deserve to be lied to or bullied or abused. You do not deserve to be manipulated. You are an exceptional, worthwhile human being who deserves honesty, empathy, and to feel safe. And if you have doubts about the way someone interacts with you, please trust your gut, you're not being paranoid, and please find help. You do not have to endure their lies or manipulation alone. Okay, and I think I'll leave it at that. Oh, hi, Automo. We needed a kitten palette cleanser. Everyone say hi to Automo Bill. Hi, honey. Oh, the belly. I got your belly. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram so I'm not lonely. And comment on this photo with a paw print emoji so I know you came from this video. Couple of Twitter shout outs to DNME who said, Swoop just has a way of putting everything together in a concise, easy to understand way while also giving her opinion in an awesome way. From the random fan who tweeted about Gabby. Thank you so much for the kind words and I hope you've been able to process everything in a healthy way. I know it's probably been a lot for you as well, so I hope you're good. And another shout out to Nally who said, if you or someone you know has been a victim of SA, please watch. It is so powerful. She's phenomenal. I really do hope the message in my Gabby Hanna doc is helpful to you humans. Um, please give it a watch after this. If you haven't seen it, I'll have it linked below. And if you want to be in my next Twitter shout out, just retweet this video on my Twitter. You can find my handle uh, linked in the description as well. Oh, you're just the cutest. Aren't they the cutest things ever? Okay, here you go, honey. Huge thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this documentary. Make sure to check out the link in the description and use code SWOOP to get 30% off your first month of this amazing fragrance service. Ooh. <sighs> so good. As far as influencers and celebrities go in general, be careful who you follow. While it's not always easy to identify the true intentions of influencers when so much nasty stuff can happen behind the scenes and the shadows of anonymity, if you see problematic behavior like bullying, prejudice, and sensitivity towards marginalized groups, power abuse, or weaponizing their audiences, then the obvious solution is usually the simplest. Stop supporting it. <laughs> if we don't continue to enable the problematic behavior, then the problematic behavior no longer has a place to be problematic on. But you know, what do I know? I'm just a girl on the internet.